Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're discussing secondary essays, one of the most common prompts, the diversity and adversity question. Make sure you stick around until the end where I'm gonna show you how I answered one of my prompts. And don't forget, if you need any resources, you can find them in the link below on my blog, like the secondary essays database. Now, before I start this video, I'm going to preface this is totally my opinions on how to approach this essay. I'm not part of an admissions committee. I have no experience as an ad com. So take this as you will. This is just speaking from my experience. The admissions committee can only see you as an iceberg. They can see everything that's on the surface. And unless you get deep down and personal and tell them what's below the surface, they will not know what your unique experiences are. So this is what we're going to delve into here. First, to start off, remember that the diversity and adversity essay is a pretty common prompt when it comes to a lot of schools. The only thing is they vary in how they ask the question. So let's look at some examples. So first, we have the University of Washington. Pretty short and straightforward. What obstacles have you experienced and how have you overcome them? So this is the adversity question. Have you faced any challenges, any hardships? What have you experienced in your past? How have you dealt with them and what have you learned from those challenges? Then we have a little bit more of an expansion from Harvard. If there is an important aspect of your personal background or identity not addressed elsewhere that you would like to share with the committee, this is the time to do so. Examples might include significant challenges, so again, adversity here, and access to education, unusual socioeconomic factors, identification with a minority culture, religion, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Briefly explain how factors have influenced your motivation for a career in medicine. So here, you basically have everything. You have the diversity, you have the adversity, and they're asking how that has impacted your choice to pursue medicine. So when we're looking at this prompt, there's a lot to go into it, a lot to think about, and we have to make sure that we address how we're connecting this into medicine. Here we have another example from the Oregon Health and Science University. So they state, please discuss how your personal experience demonstrates the ability to overcome adversity. So we have adversity in here, hardships, challenges, and contributes to diversity in the provision of healthcare. Um, please include any insight into the diversity that you will bring to our school and the profession of medicine in the context of the definition of diversity. And to them, they define diversity may include age, color, culture, disability, ethnicity, gender identity, expression, marital status, national origin, race, religion, sex, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, and we respect diversity of thought and ideas and more. It maximizes our true potential for creativity, innovation, quality, patient care, educational excellence, and outstanding service. So here, yet again, we have both the diversity aspect and the adversity aspect, and sometimes they're, they're the same thing. You, you mix them and it just becomes this one big experience that forms your background and your life up until this point. So oftentimes we have a hard time tackling diversity because we interpret the diversity question as visible diversity, and we'll get a little bit more into that here. Although universities might phrase these questions differently, it's all trying to get at the same thing. So when you start writing this essay and trying to approach it, think like an admissions committee. Put yourself in their mindset and their perspective and think about what they would want to see from you. So from this response that they're trying to see what you can bring to their school, right? How you're going to bring in a different perspective, different life experience and create a more diverse student body. They don't want a class of 100 students that are all the same, that have lived through the same thing, that have all gone to the same undergrad institution, that all have the exact same major. They want people from all kinds of backgrounds. So you shouldn't just try and limit yourself and rule yourself out because you never know what a school is looking for. So they're looking for the type of diversity that you bring and also for what kind of challenges you have experienced in the past. Are you prepared for challenges in the future? Because, I mean, medicine and going to med school and residency and all of that is going to be extremely challenging and you have to be able to adapt. So that's what they're trying to get at. So what we wanna do is write an essay that is going to show them what we have lived through, how we have a different perspective, what our diversity is, and how they can that can really bring a lot to the school and to the class. And I emphasize, when you apply to med school, they're looking for a good fit for them, but you should also be looking for a good school that will fit your values and beliefs. So this is a two-way fit. So even if you write an essay about your diversity, about your background and your challenges, it still might not be the right fit for them because, because it just doesn't align. But that doesn't mean you're not a qualified applicant and might not get accepted somewhere else. So first, I'm going to address what not to do when you start approaching the diversity and adversity question. First, do not bring up academic challenges. Most often, there will be a separate question in the secondaries that will 
talk or ask you about your academic challenges or if you want to address anything in your application specifically that might pertain to GPA, MCAT, or struggles that you have had in your classes. This diversity and adversity essay is not the place in my opinion for you to bring up academic challenges. This should be much more personal because these academic challenges, a lot of a lot of students go through academic challenges, so it's not something that will necessarily be unique to you. But if you experience an academic challenge because some unforeseen life circumstance happened during that point in time, then definitely address that life circumstance, but don't so much focus on the actual grades. Uh, address your life and the adversity that you had to overcome during that point in your life. So the other thing is don't focus only on visible diversity. Again, people kind of struggle to think of, oh, am I diverse? And you look at somebody, right? Maybe I'm, I'm white, maybe I'm a male, so therefore I'm probably not that diverse. But you can't just rely on these, what I like to call visible diversity. You can't just rely based on what you see on someone's face or someone's appearance. So we're going to have to dig much deeper when it comes to responding to these prompts. And lastly, don't just make a list. Don't just list out, this is why I'm diverse. They want you to address how you are bringing a diverse perspective and then expand on it, reflect on it, how it is going to impact you in the future and how it will impact the university as well and what you can bring to them. So here are my recommendations as to what you should do or you should think about. You should definitely reflect on your diverse experiences. Diversity, I think there is not just one definition for diversity. It is very broad. And if you're interested on my perspective, you can check out my TEDx talk on discovering diversity, which I'll link down below. But when it comes to diversity, think about the diverse experiences, hardships, challenges you have experienced in your life. And those may be a result of your skin color or your gender or your sexual orientation. But it's more about diverse experiences rather than just a specific label putting on you or someone else and saying that that's your diversity. So again, make sure you reflect on, on your background, on your life and the things that you have lived through and definitely provide examples of those things from your past because admissions committees don't want just a list, they want you to expand. Expand what has happened in the past, how it has impacted your present and then show how it is going to impact your future, how it might impact the way that you take on medical school or the types of populations that you work with in the future once you become a physician because of the background that you have. So somebody might be an advocate for, I don't know, immigrants in healthcare. Somebody might be an advocate for women in healthcare because of their past diverse, unique experiences. And again, I think this is the place to really get personal. And you'll see, I won't be reading my own prompt for you word by word because it is really personal. This is the place to really let it all out and allow the admissions committee to see what is beneath the water, what is hiding under that iceberg and what you can bring to them. So again, diversity might include age, color, culture, gender identity, sex, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, but it's the combination of all of these things that then forms your life experiences. So when I think of diversity, I think of a diverse experience of life. And for example, somebody who's a non-traditional student can talk about that diverse experience. So they might have graduated, they might have had a career and then had to backtrack and realize I want to pursue medicine. So that is their own personal experience that can bring value and a different perspective to med school compared to somebody who came straight out of undergrad. Maybe somebody was a young parent. Maybe they were young when they had their first child and that presented challenges for them. That's something you can address because maybe that then influenced you to be interested in pediatrics. Or maybe while you were an undergrad, you happened to lose a family member to some illness. And that definitely is an adversity, but also a diversity that is shaping how you view the world as you move through it and it will shape how you um, study medicine and how you interact with your patients as well. So again, get personal. Now let's look at an example prompt. So this was one prompt that I got asked, I think during my first application cycle, and it's pretty brief. We are all unique in different ways. Explain how your personal diversity manifests in your personal and professional activities. So in my prompt, I address diversity, adversity, hardships. I mix it all together and definitely must show how personally it has impacted me, it impacted me, but how it will also professionally in medicine impact me as well. So let's take a look of how I approach this. So here's my approach. Again, if somebody sees me down the street, they look at me at a first glance, these are things that you should not be able to know immediately. And this is how I am explaining to the admissions committee the depth that they can't see based on my primary application or they might not even be able to see based on my personal statement necessarily. So I'm expanding and giving them more depth. So 
Well, some of the main things that I focus on when I approach my diversity essay is that I'm an immigrant, so English was not is not my mother tongue. I am also a first generation college student. I come from a divorced household and from a household that is low socioeconomic status. So all of these things, when you combine them, then you give examples, or at least I gave examples of how this impacted me as a child, how this impacted me during undergrad, being a first generation college student, how I didn't really even know how to apply to college, didn't even know how to apply to medical school, basically had no exposure to any of that. And being an immigrant, then also my parents spend a lot of time working and didn't have much time to dedicate to help me figure those things out. And so I discuss my past and growing up, how these things influenced me. And then because of that, during un undergrad, I ended up helping a lot of other people, tutoring, mentoring incoming pre-meds that necessarily didn't have help like I also didn't. So I discuss how that influenced me to help people, how during my Fulbright year in Poland, I ended up having a lot of students that were immigrants to Poland and I could relate to them. I could mentor them and cater specifically the way I was teaching to their styles because, you know, they were 15 year olds that had moved halfway across the world to study without any family. And I, I knew what that felt like so I could relate to them. And then further participating in the Fulbright Diversity Initiative and trying to push for students with underrepresented backgrounds to be able to apply to this uh, prestigious scholarship and know more about it. So I am further giving examples of how my life has transformed me to who I am today. And from there, I eventually show how from undergrad to then med school, this is going to continue impacting me in what ways I'm going to bring that to my medical school. And I don't want to just tell the admissions committee, this is what has happened and this is who I am. I want to show them through the examples. And then these are some only really two straightforward statements out of my entire essay where I am trying to tell them how um, I have transformed. So I believe that all of these struggles have made me into a strong, self-reliant and independent individual with high internal determination to achieve my goals. So you see these, these three qualities that I'm trying to portray to them and that I will carry over into medical school and bring to that institution. Overall, the adversities which I have faced during my life have transformed me into a strong-willed individual who is willing to fight for others so, they don't, so that they don't have to face the same struggles all alone. And so here I'm kind of basically showing them this is what I'm willing to do for my patients or for other students that I interact with. So this all comes full circle and this shows a lot more depth to my application but is also reinforced by my primary application, by the activity section, and I'm never really introducing new information. It's just all reinforcing this bigger picture of who I am. And at the end of the day, all that you can do is let them know who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, what your life experiences have been, and if they believe that you are a good fit for their institution, then that's great. But if they do not believe that maybe you're not a good fit, then you shouldn't take that as that you're not a good applicant. It just wasn't a good match, just like anything. Some people don't make good friends. Some people don't work out in relationships. Same thing here. If they don't accept you, then maybe there is a reason there was a mismatch and you shouldn't take it too hard on yourself because there will be another school that will absolutely love, um, you know, everything that you have to say and everything that you stand for. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a like. Comment below if you have any questions. If you wanna check out how I responded to the why this school prompt, check out my previous video and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.